Ferrari has been diligently figuring out how to best imitate Benjamin Franklin and saddle power to ultimately benefit the supercar industry after LaFerrari prepared for hybridization for the purpose of expanding execution rather than simply saving the environment. Keeping this in mind, the Ferrari SF90 Stradale is lightning fast in a can a new period of execution for the exhibition mark that every other person should be. Not solely is the mid-mounted, Twin Super, 4.0 liter V8 engine the most surprising anytime dropped into something wearing the moving pony ID at 769 force, yet extended by three electric motors convey an extra 217 horsepower. The SF90 is the most impressive series creation Ferrari because it can produce 1,000 measurement ponies, at least in European terms. Ever. 0 to 62 miles per hour requires 2.5 seconds, the most extreme speed rests in excess of 211 miles per hour, and there's an available electric reach to be had in complete calm on electric catalyst alone. However, there are no immediate competitors, all electric vehicles like the Lotus Avija offer significantly more power, while non-half-breed fossil vehicles like the McLaren 720S and newer 750S simply cannot match the Stradale's fantastic driving attitude. How should this all influence the Italian mark? Is it no longer maybe? However, the SF90 is essentially another type of supercar, so it's possible that this is just the beginning of a new era of execution. Ferrari has unveiled a brand new vehicle that has not been seen before in a long time. Believe it or not, the SF90 Stradale is not a replacement for the LaFerrari mixture or a side project from the magnificent F8 Tributo. Neither is it a replacement for the LaFerrari. In light of everything, it's an all-new mid-engine module Mutt GT supercar that breezes up on a comparable top rack as the A12 Superfast, disregarding thoroughly overshadowing it concerning sheer execution. The mid-engine SF90 Stradale, whose name honors the 90th anniversary of the Scuderia Ferrari racing division that inspired the establishment of the street vehicle division, fosters a combined 986 horsepower by combining three electric engines with a 769 horsepower twin super V8. Each of the four haggles is powered by an 8-speed double-grab programmed gearbox. It can go from 0 to 124 miles per hour in less than 7 seconds and has an all-electric range, but according to the EPA, you can only go 9 miles on power alone. The crossover hypercar called the SF90 Stradale module by Ferrari will be available for the 2021 model year. It is named after the 2019 Ferrari Equation 1 vehicle. The Scuderia Ferrari Dashing Group's 90th anniversary is denoted by the 90. It's the picture's second combination after the LaFerrari and its most important module hybrid. It also beats the LaFerrari's 950 horsepower with its 986 horsepower effort, which is adequate for a rush to 60 miles per hour in 2.5 seconds. Additionally, an all-wheel drivetrain and an 8-speed double-grip transmission are prominent features. The EV mode only makes use of the two front hub electric engines and allows for 9 miles of travel. Additionally, there is an open-top version of the SF90 called the SF90 Insect. We independently examined the Insect. A remarkable feat is packing 986 horsepower into a mid-engined, all-wheel drive marvel. In any case, Ferrari has accomplished that with a 4.0-liter Twin Super V8 and a combination of three electric engines. The 8-mile all-electric range makes a significant distinction from the celestial display and is capable of 0 to 62 miles per hour in 2.5 seconds, 0 to 124 miles per hour in 6.7 seconds, and a maximum speed of 211 miles per hour. While the Lodge's exterior features aluminum body panels, drove grid headlights, and 20-inch composite wheels, the interior features double-zone climate control, calfskin upholstery, and an infotainment system with a 16-inch display. SF90 Stradale exterior with a Ferrari gallery that is marked by heavenly plans, it is easy to anticipate only gold from the brand that has adorned room walls and the top step of the motorsport platform for a very long time. However, the Marinello in-house configuration team has experienced some ups and downs over the past few years. However, the SF90 Stradale is a grand slam that has been smashed out of the park and possibly into the stratosphere, accumulating planned grants only months after it was first made public. With triple straight drove daytime running lights integrated into the forcefully styled boomerang drove headlights, the smooth plan relies on sharp wrinkles and centered line work. 
The side profile is much more truly catching, with an ordinary mid-engine plan and huge extending side admissions to swallow adequate air to keep a 769 horsepower V8 dealt with and cooled, while the glasshouse appears as something entirely separate from the sheet metal. The sorcery, on the other hand, takes place in the back, where there are quad right taillights, high-mounted double exhaust outlets, and a massive, streamlined diffuser encased within the back guard. Additionally, the Fiorano pack includes a carbon fiber back spoiler that stands out more. By directing wind flow out of the wheel curve and into the way of the side air admissions, 20-inch fashion compound wheels are designed to be both enjoyable and successful. On the other hand, a selection of six distinct plans, including 10-spoke wheels made entirely of carbon fiber, can take their place. Even though the SF90 Straydale may appear to be terrifying, its aspects generally suggest something that is reasonable in the end. At 77.6 inches wide and 185.4 inches long, the SF90 Straydale is 4 inches longer than AF8 Tributo, which is scarcely more modest, while the 104. 3-inch wheelbase is undefined from that of the lesser Ferrari. However, its level of 46.7 creeps is even lower than that of the F8, giving it a forceful, deliberate position. However, despite the fact that carbon fiber and aluminum have been extensively used to reduce weight wherever possible, the SF90 Straydale actually weighs 3,461 pounds dry, with the half-breed components adding 595 pounds to the total weight. People on city roads will probably see you before they hear you when the SF90 Straydale's default fire-up and low-speed tricks are only in pure electric mode. Because of this, Ferrari's design team has created a selection of more than 30 exterior paint colors that are divided into categories like unique and verifiable to ensure that you consistently make an impressive first impression. The variety among the various ranges is enormous, and considering that Ferraris are typically associated with readily available colors such as Giallo Medina, Yellow, and Rosso Corsa, Red, Bianco Avis, White, and Nero, Dark, they appear similarly stunning. However, the metallic and verifiable ranges produce the most striking pairings, with Rosso Fiorano, Rosso Dino, and the Deep Verde English, English Hustling Green, being the choices for the final option. The brilliant shade of Grigio Ingrid from the metallic range, on the other hand, is shockingly classy. The roof and engine gulf can be changed too, with a choice of either Nero or body-shaded paint for the housetop and uncovered carbon fiber for the engine cover. Due to the Fiorano pack, the dark rooftop option is available for two racing uniforms, a top with Argento Nürburgring striping and a nose in Rosso Corsa or Giallo Medina. A good plan looks good in any color, and the fact that the SF90 Straydale looks great in any color is probably the highest praise that can be given. It is not exactly the La Ferrari's replacement, rather, it is simply the second half-breed to ever leave the Marinello plant. It adheres to the same exhibition ethos, power is added to improve execution, not obscure it. An expedient gander at the figures suggests that the mission has been accomplished. The most impressive V8 ever made for a street-going Ferrari is at the heart of the SF90 Straydale, with two turbos added just in case. The Straydale receives not only a brief all-electric range but also an additional eruption of intensity and an electric all-wheel drive framework that can operate at speeds of up to 130 miles per hour, making it an unadulterated RWD sports car. After that, not one, not two, nor three electric engines further enhanced the situation. 0 to 62 miles per hour takes 2.5 seconds. The SF90 Straydale can go from 0 to 124 miles per hour in 6.7 seconds, and when its legs are extended, it will reach 211 miles per hour. The SF90 Straydale has set the standard at 1 minute and 19 seconds dead on Ferrari's Fiorano test track, where a La Ferrari ran a lap in 1 minute 19.7 seconds and a rotten 488 Pista ran a lap in 1 minute and 21.5 seconds. Naturally, what more could you possibly ask for from the most remarkable series production Ferrari ever produced? The SF90 Straydale is built with a mid-motor design that houses a 3.99-liter V8 engine with twin turbochargers. This engine produces 769 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of force, making it the strongest 8-cylinder engine ever to wear a skipping horse identification. Another 8-speed double-grasp programmed gearbox matches the ignition power, reducing the old 7-speed gearbox's weight by 22 pounds. However, the most significant aspect is the addition of three electric engines, two of which are mounted front and center and one for each wheel and are equipped to propel the SF90 at speeds of 84 miles per hour. 
Regardless, the all-electric range is less than 10 miles. The third motor is hurried between the engine and transmission, force filling to direct really slack and enabling a whole 1000 CV, 986 horsepower, to be coordinated to the road surface through the rear wheels alone. The powertrain combines the slack-free components of a Ferrari V8 with the force filling capacity of ZAP in terms of how everything performs at maximum capacity. It might not be as new as a V12 that is normally suctioned, like the one in the La Ferrari, but the human brain probably won't be able to tell the difference or notice enough of one to be really worried about. Since the gearbox swaps machine gear pieces in just 200 milliseconds, bouncing on the choke from a standstill results in an uninterrupted flow of execution with virtually no interference. It also sounds great. While not quite as melodic as the old NAV8S from Marinello, they still moan with determination as the fires rise. Despite this, it rarely works as a group, and when the engine starts up or when driving in e-drive or crossbreed mode, all you hear is a faint buzz of electrons. In any case, the fact that a Ferrari could be so composed and suddenly appear with nearly 1,000 horsepower is ghostly and disruptive. A Jekyll and Hyde character isn't actually something one would interface with a Ferrari badge thing, but even that doesn't precisely as expected convey the boggling thought of the SF90 straight ale. In EV mode, it starts quietly and happily behaves like a Chevrolet Bolt at city speeds. When you press the gas in a more ferocious mode, there will be speed and comfort in overflow, the ideal excellent sightseer exactly as it was intended to be. The suspension is smooth, the coordinating sharp anyway not excessively so, and truly incredible for Ferrari's most paramount electric power help game plan, and the overall levels of comfort past the presumption for a vehicle with this much power. In what environment, the electric all-wheel drive system even means the SF90 is successfully stifled and absolutely implausible to let you out when driven in partial disappointment. However, the new e-Manitino drive selector's execution or qualifying modes enable instinctive execution. The coordinating is sharpened, the body hardened, and the straydale strips itself of the GT material for direct, totally befitting of hypercar status. However, it behaves differently than typical Ferrari hypercars, and the drive at the front pivot gives the impression of being pulled through turns rather than being pushed from behind, which is not at all typical of Ferrari behavior. It's stunning anyway thoroughly captivating, and keeping in mind that approaching into a turn, the insured force vectoring given by the electric motors suggests dealing with is more sharp than any time in ongoing memory. Even though they have a higher degree of energy recovery built into their activity, the brakes deserve the same recognition because they provide a decent amount of input. The SF90 can stop from 62 miles per hour in 96.7 feet, despite the fact that Ferraris do not really have the final say in terms of brake feel and criticism. However, the viability of the monstrous 15.7-inch front brake and 14.2-inch back brake cannot be undervalued. The SF90 Straydale is as agile as the F8 Tributo or Portofino, but it has a lot more power than those cars. It can be driven on narrow, winding streets or open mountain passes. We haven't seen anything like this from the brand before, so it's a pleasant presentation. The SF90 Straydale has taken areas of strength for the leap from easy to electronic, to the extent that it's powertrain, but with respect to inside design as well evading the standard basic measures for an as-of-late developed mechanized instrument bundle on a totally configurable 16-inch twisted screen that matches for infotainment commitments, too. It occupies an entire room with diving lines, a newly designed contact-sensitive steering wheel, press-button gear selectors designed to resemble an old-fashioned H-design manual box, and steady pale seats upholstered in elegant cowhide. A head-up display aids in computerized coordination and supports reducing the amount of time a driver spends looking anywhere but the street ahead by 36%, according to Ferrari. The materials, which include calfskin, alcantara, and carbon fiber, are, as one would expect, exquisite and extraordinary at the same time. However, the overall design and feel are clearly Ferrari. The electric components deny the fantastic sightseer its reasonableness, which is the primary disappointment. There are many things that make current Ferrari special, but typically, all-wheel drive is not one of them. The GTC4 Lusso, a Ferrari supercar with four seats, was the last one to have all-wheel drive. More recently, the Puro Sang SUV was made available with AWD. However, despite being built on a platform that is comparable to that of the GTC4 Lusso in terms of cost and GT acceleration, the SF90 Straydale lacks the benefit of additional seats. 
In a low-throated hotel, you get two seats, so getting in and out is a pretty uncoordinated process that should be reserved for parking spots with a lot of space to open up the long entrances. The power plant's simple cut of a back windscreen hinders aft perceivability in typical mid-motor designs, whereas forward views are crystal clear. The lodge is bright and airy thanks to the enormous glasshouse, and the wide backside fills the wing mirrors, making it impossible to forget that this is primarily an exhibition vehicle. It is typical for a high-end manufacturer to provide customers with five upholstery options, however, with the straight ale, you only have access to a limited number of seat plans, with any variation of standard, style, or Daytona ranging from comfortable to particularly reinforced. In addition, standard hustling and Daytona dashing seats can be purchased with woven carbon fiber shells, which not only save weight but also look amazing at the same time. Those seats can be had in one of 15 calfskin tones including Crema, Savia, Siacolato, Nero, Blue Genuine, and more particular colors like Rosso Ferrari and Carta di Zucchero. Although a readily available carbon inside update generously sprinkles the woven material all around the steering wheels, run, and entryways, matching cowhide adorns the scramble and entryways as standard. In point of fact, cowhide or Alcantara flooring can be customized in nine shades. The majority will select Nero, Blue, or Testa di Moro, however, Castoro, Rosso, Atranto, and, surprisingly, a robust shade called Nuovo Cuoio are available for those with more exquisite preferences. If there is one problem with the SF90 straight ale, it is the character emergency it faces. In addition to having approximately 1,000 horsepower, it should be a mid-engine GT vehicle. The last time Ferrari produced one of these was in 1996, when the Ferrari F512M served as the Testarossa's successor. However, the mid-mounted motor meant that there was not a lot of cargo space. In addition to the fact that this is the situation with the straight ale, the front and center electric engines make the front sway significantly. The F8 Tributo can carry 7 cubic feet of cargo in its nose, whereas the SF90 can only handle 2.63 D shapes. The back bundle rack doesn't really add a great deal of extra good judgment, with 0.7 cubic feet arranged to serve. Although the straight ale hesitates here in relation to GT vehicles, it is possible that a small gym bag could fit in the trunk. Internal limit is fitting, yet not superfluous, with slim mid-control region limit under the armrest board, cup holders before the button-style gear selector, and a restricted glove box for the Explorer. The SF90 is actually identical to the Ferrari that no one buys in search of cutting-edge driver assistance features, rubbing seats, or ambient lighting that responds to the radio's music. Front and back park sensors, a nose lift framework, power flexible seats, power windows, and keyless central locking are all accessible features. There's process control, voice commencement, two-fold zone climate control, keyless section and start, and a power adaptable coordinating fragment close by customized drove headlights and a mandatory rear view camera, yet next to this, the straight ale is by and large paired back as per a component's perspective. 2021-2023 Ferrari SF90 Straydale models have been explored once for a Voyager airbag that could impact a youngster seat, with 13 units influenced by this survey. However, considering that this is nothing short of a complex mechanical monster, it is encouraging to note that there have been no powertrain-related reviews prior to the vehicle's launch. This moreover looks really great for fresher Ferrari fabs like the 296 GTB. However, the Italian manufacturer does provide a comprehensive seven-year support plan that covers routine maintenance at intervals of miles or a year. It will also be subject to U.S. law because it is a PHEV, which means that it must have a guarantee on all half-breed parts for a long-time pick. From there, estimates continue to rise as options become available, and some orders for nearly new SF90S from 2022 will cost more than $700,000.